All right, uh, this is a EDC, um, DC voltage standard, uh, 10 volts on one range and 10 millivolts on the other range. Uh, plus or minus polarity, overload protected, uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, decimal places here. Uh, and then this goes between zero and 10. Um, and when you change the millivolt range, you get, uh, uh, let's see, one, one, Zero, zero, zero. You only get four digits or four, four decimal places after that. All right, so we'll go to 10, have it on positive. We'll take a look at uh, what this thing is outputting, if it's in Cal or not. Okay, so we're at 999. That's not too bad for an old instrument that hasn't been Cal in probably a very, very long time. All right, let's change the uh, knob here, 9 volts. Well, it's bouncing around a bit. 8 volts. Seven, six, five, four. Yeah, I think it uh, looks pretty good. It looks like there might be an offset. Looks like there might be an offset. Let's go to zero volts. Eh, no, it's pretty well spot on there at zero volts. So there's some offset in some place. Here at one volt we are off. So anyway, it needs calibration. But, um, let me see if I can dial in, dial in some calibration here. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so it is, uh, I've dialed in 1, 3. So, 0. 0.00013. So, that is pretty low. <laughs> I just need to get rid of this 13. So let's leave it on uh, with the 13 offset and we'll try the, uh, we'll try the big numbers again. Two, three, a little off, four. Yeah, it needs cal. It just needs cal. It needs a little bit more at the high end there. So let's go up to 10. Yeah, still needs a little bit more. Down to one. It seems as though, yeah, there's a little bit of. So these uh, switches probably need some cleaning, but the manual uh, warns you that you don't want to overclean them. It's more of a lubrication thing that's necessary than a than a cleaning thing that's necessary. But I think some of the spray cleaners, contact cleaners, have lubrication in them. So I'm going to go ahead and take a chance and clean these anyway. Um, let's, uh, oh, one thing that I discovered, which is really, really weird, is, uh, let's leave it on one volt here, and I'm going to switch the polarity knob, okay? And so, can you see that? Let's see here. Okay. I'll switch the polarity knob, and it gives me an offset change. And you'd say, oh, that's probably, uh, op amp offset or something like that. But all it does is, uh, is it actually just... Uh, swaps the wires. It's just a switch that swaps the wires, okay? So we can do the same thing here. I can pull the plug out and turn it around and put it back in. So let me let me do that. I'm gonna, so we're at 0 0.012. I'm gonna turn it over, plug it back in, and I'm at 0 0.012, right? So swapping the wires around should be okay. So again, I think it's probably, probably the switch has dirty contacts on it, some type. So we'll have to we'll have to address that. Let's go ahead and look at this uh, instrument down here at the bottom. I'm hiding that one, uh, so I've got that one on as well. So we can try this one out. Uh, let's see where is it? It's up, but it's BNCs are on the back, so I need to reach around here and work on that. Okay, now we're connected there. All right, so we're going to have to think of DCD here. So we'll have eight two, which is ten. All right, and so we have. Um, not too bad. Nine point, again, it needs an uh, offset type of thing. Maybe it was cal by the same lab. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and put in one volt. There's one, two, three, four, five. It's kind of like, um, <laughs> it's really fun. It feels like programming an MSI. <laughs> so, I, I, all right, one, two, three, four, Five, six, 
seven. Yeah, feels like feels like fiddling with an MSI, so it fits the channel really, really well. Um, so this one, obviously, you can program it in BCD, and it has a program mode. Oh, they all go white. So anyway, they'll go high. Uh, you put it in manual mode, you get to play with the front switches, so uh, that's great. And then it has a 100 millivolt range and a 10 volt range over here. And that does nothing at all. That switch does nothing at all, unless that LED is burned out. Uh, let's see here, let's put in one volt, and it's measuring one volt. Put in 100 milli, nah, it doesn't change. This something, either that switch has been disabled or it's broken or it was never an option on this machine, I, I don't know yet. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. We just need to uh, need to calibrate this thing, and um, let's uh, let's take a look inside because I think the insides of these things is quite quite interesting. All right, just two screws and the top comes off. Should be easy on everything like that. All right. Oops. I'll put that over here. Okay, there's the insides. It's very very old school. All hand done, single sided PC board. Might have been etched by them. <laughs> um, yeah, let me move the camera over a bit so you can see better. So, transformer here, uh, wires to strain relief uh, comes in. Everything is exposed. So if you touch here, you'll zap yourself. You touch here, you'll zap yourself. Touch here, you'll zap yourself. <laughs> um, and uh, then the power supply is here. These look pretty crusty. Probably want to recap this thing. Um, here is the actual thing that does the real work. Uh, there is some type of transistor. This is probably voltage regulation. This is probably all just sets voltage regulation. Um, there's this brick here. If you've never seen bricks like that, um, really, really old op amps look just like this. Uh, but this one gives, the, gives, gives it away. It's actually written on it. It says chopper stabilized operational amplifier. So yeah, chopper stabilized. So back in the day, you had to have circuitry to do that. And these are just little PC boards with potted or something like that. So yeah, so uh, Teledyne Philbrick um, chopper stabilized amp, which is what you need for these things because you need zero offset current. So um, there may be an adjustment for the offset current, this one here. So... I might be looking at that one. So some of the somebody's been in here before and has labeled some of these things. So they say zero. So this is this is some offset, and then they say uh, volts and millivolts. So there's some type of tweak that's done here. Um, the magic Zener diode is this one right here. It's orange. Let me let me get something to point with. So this this diode here is selected and measured, and it is right here. It says. Uh, it needs to be 6.3252 volts at 7 milliamps, okay? And that's with this adjustment here. This adjustment, you need to uh, monitor that photo, uh, uh, Zener diode and look at its voltage and set this current to give that voltage and then it, it will be happy. It will, it's been characterized to be the most stable over temperature under these conditions, okay? So that's the, that's the thing here. Um, now, where the money is spent in these things is all of these resistors, okay? Um, and this resistor, like over here, I can just read it, is 0.005%. Yeah, 2K 0.005%. So, yeah, these are very expensive resistors. And um, the calibration is done here for the switches, for the, for the, the different values, okay? And so one, two, three, uh, six, um, six adjustments here. And then once you get the high end working, this is the volts working. Everything else is a reduction with a voltage divider from there. Okay. And like I said, 0 0.005. So it stays pretty good uh, once the high end is calibrated. Okay. And like I said, I believe the... The 106 manual t uh, has a section on calibrating these things, tells you how to do that. So I should just be able to use that for this one and get it up to snuff. Um, yeah, anything else going on in here? I should probably measure these, uh, measure these caps and replace them before I do any calibration. There's a couple of extra, couple extra ones in here. One. This one's a point two. This is a film. 
There's a film over here too. That one looks crusty, but I'm not going to touch that one because that one's probably hand selected. Um, yeah, so four, four capacitors I'll probably replace. All right, let's take a look at the other one. Okay, this one had me a little nervous. The screws that hold the top are missing. And so I can just slide it right off. So that makes me a little bit nervous. Something has been done in there, but I don't know. But you will notice, and much to my amazement, it's very, very different than the other unit. Um, it's completely different than the other unit. So I'm a bit surprised about that because they basically do the same thing. And just because one is programmable, I don't think that would add too much difference, actually. There'd be just a bunch of FET switches instead of switches on the front panel. So anyway, let's take a look on this one. Uh, so the power supply is over here. It's much more, much more beefy. Um, got some big caps in it and some, some TO3 uh, regulators and stuff. So a little TO66 here. Cute little, cute little uh, heat sink on that one. Anyway, so yeah, it's on uh, edge connectors, so it's nice to, I can remove it and work on it all by itself. So that's really, really nice. Now what's amazing is so many op amps in this thing. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, all of these are stabilized, uh, chopper stabilized amplifiers. So I'm curious about why the design was changed. Um, lots of expensive uh, resistors, okay. These are all expensive resistors. Uh, point. Oh, these aren't, these aren't as bad. These are only 0.1%. Hmm. So cheaper resistors. I don't get it. More expensive op amps, cheaper resistors. That makes no sense to me. Anyway, and then here's all the FET switching. So the, the BCD comes into these FET switches and it enables the various, uh, sections here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, there's six FET switches and there's five op amps. I don't know. I don't know. These are pretty old school caps down here. Uh, where is the magic? Where's the magic diode? Where's the magic? Oh, there it is. The magic diode is right here. Oh, here it's marked. This one is uh, 6.27773 at 6.5 milliamps. So yeah, need to adjust these things for the perfect thing. Um, and then uh, a lot of weird extra circuitry over here. So interesting. A couple generic op amps there, 741. So I don't know. It is a little bit strange. It is a little bit strange. And it claims to have a 488 bus. So yeah, there you go. Oh, there's a card I didn't show you that's the 488, 488 controller. Let me uh, spin things around. All right, so over on the other side is this board here, which is the, uh, the 488 interface. That'd be an interesting schematic to find. Very old school stuff. Let's see if I can find a uh, date code on one of these things. All right, 1981, something like that, just when I was starting working. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's pretty vintage like me. So it's in good hands.